So good Shabbos again, everyone. It's great to see so many of you here. So this past Monday, I took my youngest son, Ari, to go get a new suit for an upcoming family simcha. And we went over to a clothing store over in Rice Village. We met a very nice salesman. We spent a lot of time with him picking out the right pants and coat and getting my son Ari all sized up. And as we were beginning to check out and he was processing everything and working on the alterations, you know, just making small talk with them. And I asked him, I said, why did the other store that's part of this national chain, why did the Meyerland store close? And he looked at me as straight as day. He said, oh, we closed the Meyerland store because there's a lot of Jews over there and they don't like to spend money. My first thought was, oh, it's my day off, and now I've got to deal with this. <laughs> and then my second thought was, well, I've got a sermon. <laughs> so I didn't know what to do. My 17-year-old son, who's usually embarrassed any time I try to bring up Judaism when we're out in public, looked at me with the biggest eyes I've ever seen. I couldn't believe it either. I had my keep on. It was my black keep, but maybe he didn't see it, but I had my keep on. And I couldn't believe what he just said. So it took me a few minutes. I checked myself. Did he really just say that? <laughs> I looked at Ari again, and he nodded. Yes, he did say that. <laughs> so after a few minutes, I thought to myself, I could maybe have one of three responses. The first response maybe is just to throw the clothes down and walk out. But I just spent an hour of my life there, and I really didn't want to take Ari to another clothing store. My second thought was maybe I made a big scene, called for the manager, maybe caused a big ruckus. But that's not really me. That's not really my style. My third response, my third possible response that I thought about and I ended up going with is to say, look, and this is what I said to him when everything was rung up and we were getting ready to leave. I said, you know, you should know that we're Jewish. And when I told him that, I've never seen bigger eyes in my life. <laughs> he was definitely red and embarrassed. I said, you know, we're Jewish, and we do like to spend money from time to time. And I know many Jews, and some like to spend money and some don't. You can't really stereotype Jewish people. And I told him that particular stereotype is an awful thing to say. It's an awful thing to think. I hate stereotypes, and I said, and perhaps you do as well. He apologized. He said he was sorry. I shook his hand, and that was it. And we walked out. Before we left, I should add, I reminded him, please don't do that again because it's really not right. So we walked out the store, and, and I'm not sure if I handled it the best way. Perhaps there's other ways to handle it. But I think there's two important lessons for all of us if this ever happens to us. You know, we hear that anti-Semitism is up in our country right now, that unfortunately there's more anti-Semitic incidents here and really across Europe and across the world. But this is the first time I've been confronted with anti-Semitism in a very, very long time. I think the first time since I was in grade school. So it was hard. It was hard to stomach to hear someone just here in Houston in the village say something so derogatory about us. But my gut tells me that, God forbid, this may happen more and more in the years ahead. And so I think number one is, I think it is important to say something. And it's up to each of us to decide how we'll handle it when a colleague or a neighbor or a store employee, a salesman, says something like this. I think it's important to respond, not to ignore it, but to be a proud Jew, to say, you know, I'm Jewish, and that offends me. And that's not okay. But there was a number two lesson that perhaps we can learn from this as well. And I take back what I, I remember what I learned last year. You may remember the story. I spoke about it on Yom Kippur. Some of you that are sports fans may remember the story. About a year ago, there was an NBA player named Myers Leonard who played for the Miami Heat. And he was on an online video app playing a video game. And he used a very anti-Semitic slur. And immediately, he was canceled. The team he was on, the Miami Heat, waved him. Sponsors began to drop him. He had done something really wrong. He said he didn't realize how 
offensive this remark was. He tried to gain apologies. He tried to seek forgiveness. And that's when Jared Edelman, the former Jewish player, football player for the New England Patriots, reached out to Myers Leonard and said, I believe your sincerity. Let me have you over for Shabbat dinner. Let me take you to the Holocaust Museum in Miami. Let me teach you a little bit about what happened to our people during the Holocaust. Let me teach you a little bit about the state of Israel. Let me teach you a little bit about the tradition that I'm very proud of. And he did all those things. In fact, Myers Leonard in Miami, the player, the NBA player, went and visited the Holocaust Museum in South Florida. He went and met with survivors. He met with rabbis and educators. He even taught basketball camp for kids at the JCC, which is definitely repentance. <laughs> he really went through a serious remorse period, a sense of tachuva, a sense of repentance. And I loved what Jared Edelman did. He didn't cancel him. He didn't curse him. He didn't say he was unredeemable. He gave him a path to forgiveness, and he took that path. And perhaps I should have said more to this employee, maybe invited him here, maybe tell him I was a rabbi, really embarrassed the guy. Perhaps I should have done more, and maybe I will when we go to pick up my son's suit in a few weeks after alterations. <laughs> but I definitely won't show him this. <laughs> but it's a reminder, I think, to all of us to stand up when we hear these remarks and then use them as teaching moments, to put our hands out. And if we can, use as an opportunity to remind people that it's not okay to stereotype, that we know not all Jews are the same, that the stereotypes are not true, that we, like Jews, like all people, have good and bad people. We're normal people, people just trying to make an honest living, to raise honest families, and try to make our way in a very challenging world. That's the message I think is more important than ever before. And so I encourage all of you that this something similar happens to you, no matter where it is, stand up and use it as an opportunity to teach. Shabbat Shalom, everyone.